Welcome to Unit 4. So in this unit, we're going to study communication and the different ways we can communicate. So the first thing I want you to think about is a way that you probably don't think about necessarily communication, but it's more one-way communication. How does your car radio work? So I just want you to think about that for a second. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so now that you've thought about how does your car radio work, Let's take a look. So we are going to look at this simulation from this website. I've already had it loaded up. Um, if you try to load it up, it does require Java, so it can be um, a bit of a bit time consuming to, to get it started. But the idea is here's the radio station. And it's more complicated than this, but it's not too much more complicated. They just put electricity through a big rod and they wiggle the electron. And that makes waves that go through the air, special types of waves called radio waves. We'll talk about what they are in a second. And those waves go through the air, and they make a little wiggle on electron at your house in this case, or you could think of your uh, car. So um, a lot of times, you know, we're not just manually wiggling it. A lot of times we're going to send um, a signal like this. We're going to oscillate the signal at a certain frequency or amplitude, or a certain frequency and amplitude, and then um, that's going to wiggle the electron on the receiver. And just so you can see, you've probably heard about frequency before. If you lower the frequency, it's going to slow down the wiggle. So it's still, the, the electron's still going to go, I probably shouldn't have lowered it that much, the electron's still going to go just as high and um, just as low, but it's going to slow down. Let's let's make it go a little faster. So you can see as I'm going up the frequency, the waves are just getting faster and faster and faster. Okay. So the idea is I can modify how I wiggle this electron with my voice or something else like a microphone or you know um a recording on a computer and the and then I can get a, my electron to wiggle here and it'll come out my speakers in the radio. So that's one way to communicate and specifically that way to communicate is an example of analog communication. And an example of analog communication, all that means is <clears throat> that we aren't, we are sending um, non-discrete values, which means we can wiggle that electron however we want, and the electron on the other end hopefully will wiggle the same way. The b big problem is, is it's, not, it's very susceptible to noise. So analog communication is very susceptible to noise. Because if you get a little mountain in the way or that wave reflects off something, you've probably um, feel, done this in the radio, especially on long car trips. When you're getting far away from the radio station, it starts to get fuzzy or it cuts in and out. Um, and that's sort of the problem with uh, the analog communication. So how are we doing this? How are we communicating? So we're actually communicating. Um, you can see radio waves on here. So right here, the common name of the wave. And this is the electromagnetic spectrum. So you might not think these are related, but actually radio waves, microwaves, infrared rays, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays are all related. They're all the same thing as visible light. So the same thing you can see with your eye. It's the same makeup. It's basically just vibrating electro, um, electric and magnetic fields, and that's light. So radio waves are just another form of light because that's the way you can think about it. And these are really good for um, transmitting data over, um, you know, and communicating wirelessly. If we communicate with a wire, usually you do it with, a, um, you know, through sending <coughs> electrical signals or sending light signals, which we'll talk about later. But we already talk about wireless and wired communication. Let's think about, um, like I just said, digital versus analog. So analog, we send a full signal and receive a full signal. Think about the electron moving around, right? And then digital, all we send 
is a stream of ones and zeros, and then convert it to the information we want. Okay. So the nice part about digital is basically you can think of it like it's like an on-off signal, right? One is on and zero is off. So um, if you think about like uh, a, let's say a bright light in the distance, right? It's flashing on and off and on and off and on and off. You'd probably be able to see whether or not that bright light is on or off pretty easily, um, you know, as long as you're not too far away. But what if then we decided to have more analog where we could turn that intensity up from, you know, zero to 100%? And you had to guess, you had to figure out, someone was trying to t send you a signal, you had to figure out if they were sending it, if it was on 10% or if it was on 20% or 30% or 40%. That's the kind of difference between analog and digital. It's a little bit harder when um, to really differentiate the signal and what's going on with analog when there's noise or when it, you're, you don't really have a perfect receiver or something like that. So digital makes it much easier to um, deal with that noise because you just have this on-off. Um, still problems can arise with it, but it's much easier to deal with that noise. Okay, so we're going to think a little bit about how digital communication works. And we're going to go back to our micro bit. So let's say you put this code on your micro bit. So I want you to read this code for a minute or two, and I want you to pause the video, and I want you to think about what this code will do. So go ahead and pause it. Okay, so hopefully you paused it, and now you're back. So let's look at what this what this is going to do. So first thing to notice is it's on start, so it's not going to repeat at all. It's just going to do do this once, because it doesn't have the forever thing there, right? In this case, it's going to show the number one, and then here's the, the kicker here. It's going to pause. It's going to pause for a random amount of milliseconds. A millisecond is just a thousandth of a second. So since it's going, we, we're going to pick a random number between 1,000 and 3,000, it's basically going to pause for a random amount of seconds, from one to three seconds. Then it's going to show the number zero and do the same thing. Then it's going to show the number one and do the same thing. And then it's just going to show a heart to say, yep, we're done. Okay? So let's think about what we can communicate. So we've, we've looked at data and we looked how data is stored. And if we remember, ones and zeros are sort of a special thing that a computer stores, right? And we've already talked about sort of the language of computers that they speak in binary, right? So if we look at this, and we look at what 101 is, we don't worry about any of the leading zeros here. So we just say, okay, we're just going to do 101. It's going to be a 5. So this is a way to transmit a 5. Okay? So now the next thing that you're going to do is you are going to recreate this activity. So how are, we going to, how are you going to do it? So you are going to um, pick a number between 0 and 15. Then you're going to program the micro bit to show that number with just the zeros and ones. So your program is going to look very, very similar to this, but it's going to be your binary here. So if you pick 9, you'd be showing 1001. Zero, zero, one. And the other thing is you're not going to include any leading zeros. So like I said, if you show a 2, you would just display a 1 and a 0. Because a 2 here, you don't need that leading 0, you don't need that leading 0, so you just display a 1 and then a 0. Okay? And then you still want this pause with the random numbers just like I did after all your 1s and zeros. So keep this pause and just do exactly like I did with the pick random 1,000 to 3,000 after all of your numbers are displayed. So, and you also want to put an R at the end, of, end to signal you are done communicating. Then, you're going to record your micro bit displaying your number. After your micro bit is done displaying the number, so it will be displaying a heart at that point, you want to wait five seconds, okay, and then say the number you're displaying. This is because someone else is going to be looking at your video, and you don't want you want they want they're going to be trying to decode your your number, so you don't want to. Um, or they're trying to, going to try to interpret your number so that you don't want to give it away right away. You want them to have a chance to pause it. And then you're going to upload just the video to the discussion board that, that follows this video content. And then you're going to watch three of your classmates' videos and include your guess and whether or not you were right or wrong. 
So basically, you're going to watch their videos, and you're going to pause when they're waiting that five seconds. And you're going to guess, using this chart, which number they were trying to send to you. Okay? So that's what you're doing next. Um, good luck, and I will see you on the next video.